Hello and welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast. My name is Amy and I am the host of the Women's Wellness Podcast where we empower women to make informed decisions and choices about their health, life and family and we do so by interviewing experts in their field. Um, today we are welcoming back Jesse Buttons. So Jesse, if you missed the previous podcast that we did, um, she is the New Zealand super nanny and she is also the author of a best-selling book called The Nature of Children, which describes the four different natures that we're all born with and the strategies that meet the needs of each nature. So we did mention these, we did discuss these in the last podcast. And if you want to know more about the four natures of children, I will pop a link in the show notes so you can go and have a look at that. I highly recommend it. It was definitely eye-opening for me. And today we are going to be talking about common parenting mistakes and it is part of a three-part series. So today we are going to be talking about the general mistakes and then we will go into more depth in the next two parts. So I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be enlightening again if the last podcast is anything to go by. So welcome Jesse. Thanks for having me back on your show, Amy. Oh, I'm so excited because, yeah, there are so many mistakes that people have mentioned when I've asked people that this will be really, really, really useful. Um, I just thought before we got into the list of mistakes that we've got, if you could reintroduce yourself for those who haven't listened to the last podcast sure. and just tell us a little bit about you, um, maybe recap the four natures just a quick one two three four and then we'll go into it absolutely so i'm jesse buttons the new zealand super nanny and i'm the author of the book the nature of children so the nature of children is about the four different natures um, in terms of temperament and they are social strong sensitive and structured so the social and the strong they are the extroverted high moving natures, the social being the cheeky, upward, bouncy nature, and the strong being the forward, swift, dynamic, um, action nature. And the sensitive and structured, they're the more lower movement natures, more introverted. Sensitives are very intuitive, very slow and graceful, very nurturing. And the structured are our intellects, they are the facts, the spreadsheet makers, the very serious natures. So those are the four natures. And um, today we're talking about common mistakes that parents make unintentionally, of course. And I wanted to say, especially um, that it's okay to make mistakes. I tried to think of a different word to use that was more positive, but I think it's important to realize that life is about choices and uh, um, we all make mistakes. Yeah, sometimes and so if, as a parent yeah exactly and if as a parent you're attaching your self-worth um, to mistakes you're making and you're feeling more of a heavy shameful feeling don't mm -hmm. do that um, you want to feel just this guilty like oh, oh I yeah I do that that's me um, so that's a that's a helpful feeling because um, we can we can make changes and we can pivot to put ourselves more at an advantage to parenting. So the first mistake that I see obviously is parents not recognizing their child's nature. And this, this happens very naturally, of course. Um, when children don't get, when parents don't recognize their child's nature, they don't recognize the needs of that nature. And so when a child's needs aren't met in a positive way, they go about meeting them any way they can, which is normally in a negative way. So for example, yeah. a strong natured yeah. child, they have this need for challenges. So if they're not challenged at school, they're gonna come home and challenge you as a parent or, or challenge their siblings. Um, I recently helped a family who had a little structured five-year-old and she structured natures they, they a high need for them is to have control and authority over themselves 
and her parents were quite controlling. They wanted to have the control. They told her, they micromanaged her, they told her what to do and when to do it. So she actually stopped eating and stopped drinking as a way to say, I just need to have this control over myself. And when oh. I met her, she had dry lips and she just refused to do anything. She became really stubborn. So it can get really bad. With, and, mm. and these parents didn't, did not realise what nature she was, why she was doing it. They thought that she was being stubborn and naughty and they were disciplining her and trying to control her even more. So the solution to this problem is, of course, to read my book and learn about the four different natures and what each nature's highest need is. And there's lots of examples in there um, for how to meet these needs. Yeah, even... Even I highly recommend looking back and listening to the, the previous podcast that we did that broke everything down more because when you were talking about the different natures and breaking it down, I know I realized that I'm a sensitive and my husband is very much a structured and just, <laughs> just figuring out the dynamic between us there was one thing. And then looking back to my upbringing and Anytime I got in trouble or overwhelmed about anything, I'd cry and then I'd get told, oh, you're just crying because you want something and always going, you don't understand me. You don't yeah. Understand. And yeah, that would help so much with angst, especially as a teenager. Mm. Because as a teenager, you're often seen as being manipulative if you're, if you're crying. And Absolutely. Yeah. And I think for you as a sensitive, one of the high needs for a sensitive is, is some face-to-face -face connection. Mm. And probably in your situation, parents are working, they're busy, they're there, you know, you're in the car, they're with you all the time, but maybe you weren't getting that actual face-to-face -face connection. So you probably thought as a young girl, if I cry, maybe they'll look at me and maybe I'll get that deep sense of connection, which maybe. is one of your high needs. So can you see how it kind of happens unintentionally Yeah. and then subconsciously for the child? And it all makes sense. I never thought about it. Yeah. Never thought about it at all. And yeah, it totally makes sense. So yes, yeah. watch the previous video and get yeah. Jessie's book. <laughs> <laughs> so the second mistake, let's go into the next one. And I've called this one not dodging darts. Now I do have a video mm. on my website about dodging darts, but I'll explain it quickly. So on top of those high needs that each nature has, all children and all humans have this need for significance and, and power, personal power. Is anyone looking at me? Am I powerful? Do, do I have meaning? Am I worthwhile? And again, if they're not getting this need met in a positive way, they will get it met in a negative way. And this can look, look like things such as when you say to a toddler, don't touch that, and they look at you and touch it again, and they just have that little bit of power over you. Or you say, no more, no more cookies. Don't take one more bite. And they just quickly take another bite. Or if you say, hurry up, and they, they drag their feet on purpose. And you know they're doing it on purpose. And they know they're doing it on purpose. They just want to have that little bit of power. Just pushing and buttons and just, testing you, aren't they? pushing that button just to yeah. say, you know what? You've been bossing me around all day. I'm just going to have this little bit of power because I need it. So the problem is, when you don't recognize this behavior as a dart and you don't have the ability to dodge it, that behavior, that the, the child wins then. They get that little bit of power because they're like, ha ha, I did that and it annoyed you, but I got a little bit of power over you. So the mistake here is not dodging the dart and not recognizing the dart. And if you think about the age and stage of children, um, a, a, a toddler, their, dart, their, their darts are more like a Nerf gun. Like you can see them loading it up. They've got this <laughs> cheeky look on their face. They're loading it up and they're pointing it at you and they shoot it and it hits you and it, it doesn't even hurt. They're a toddler. You just let it bounce off you and you just, you just smile at them and you just, you just do not let it annoy you, right? And then yeah. as the child gets older, we might think about a teenager, maybe they've got a paint gun and that hurts. You know, how dare they? It came out of nowhere and they shot you. 
but you've still got to not let it annoy you. If you let it hit you, there's blood on the floor and the blood is yours. And if you return the dart, which is, which is another mistake, the blood is on the floor and it's the child's. In either mm. scenario, they have, they, have, they have some power. Yeah. That's what they want. Yeah. So if you don't give these behaviours the attention, they no longer have any value and the behaviours will stop. And, of course, you've got to come in and give them that power and significance in healthier ways. Mm, that makes me think of something that a client of mine said. Um, her eldest, I think her kids were like two and six months old at the time, and or nearly two, and the two-year-old had this dump truck, and he kept driving it into the TV cabinets, bang, bang, bang. Mm -hmm. She's like, stop that, don't do that. And he kind of looks at her and just goes, bang, <laughs> and keeps doing it. Yeah. What, how, do you, how do you not let that dart hit you? I know it's only a small one, but it's that repetitive it's bang, bang, bang. Yeah. So you would just walk over calmly. Wow, it looks like your truck needs something to bang into. Let's go over outside and let's see where we can bang it outside. And right. if he decides to do it one more time, just don't let it hit you. Just mm. ignore it. So therefore, that behavior has no power for him. He doesn't, he's not getting anything out of it. In fact, you've walked yeah. away at this stage. He hasn't taken your idea up and you've walked away. So that, that didn't give, give him any power. It gave him no significance. It gave him no attention. Oh. But if you it's were like, oh, hey, 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 stop, yeah. stop. That's, that's my good cow. Nah, nah, nah. They're like, oh, well, that made mum jump. Yeah. they do it again. I know what's precious to mum. Yeah. And you'll see the same sort of behaviours happening. Like they know when to... They know when to shoot you. It's in public. It's at the supermarket. It's when you don't want to be embarrassed. It's when you're in a hurry. They know the best times to shoot you. So you've got to be ready for it. Mm. Good question. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of a learning just how to breathe and go. It's not important. And, or deflect it. Don't yeah, read it. You've just got to come up with a strategy for yourself. Like being ready for it is number one. So if yeah. you're listening to this, you'll know now you're going to be ready for it and you'll, you're going to start to see darts immediately. They come in all sorts of different forms and even partners and spouses can throw darts at each other. And it's, it's really good to know that. Oh yeah, we do. They know yeah. as well. <laughs> so you can, you can do, um, if you've seen the movie, the matrix and they mm -hmm. kind of just dodging the bullets, you kind of just let it, you know, just let it fly past you. It's just, a, it's just a bullet. Um, you can pretend to have a shield and the bullet just hits the shield and just falls to the ground. Didn't hit you, didn't hurt. Um, sometimes though, parents let the bullet just graze them and they just get a little bit ruffled. And, the, and sometimes that's just enough for the child to go, aha, uh -huh, gotcha, a little yeah. bit. And maybe if I turn it up a bit, this used to annoy parents, but now it doesn't, but maybe I need to turn it up a bit. So they might just try that a little bit harder in the beginning. And they're kind of like, hey, this used to really annoy mum. And now it doesn't. Yeah. So Champ the volume a bit. So you've got to be aware of that as well. And hold your place. Embrace. Mm. What if something is um, unsafe? Like if they were playing too close to the, to the oven or they were poking around near wires. And I don't know, something that's a bit more dangerous or if they're too close to the road and you... Well, I think, yeah, yeah depending on the age. I mean, under... under Kind of under three, they don't have the intellect to understand. So yeah. you've actually got to be there. You've actually got to set up an environment that is safe for them. Yeah. And obviously, if they're near the oven or near a hot cup of coffee, you would run over there and you would you would keep them safe. Yeah. I so don't that's a different think reaction would... to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you wouldn't then make a huge big deal of it because then it kind of gives it energy. Yeah. Um. And then an older child, you know, you can run over there and say, hey, look, I, that, you know, you gave me fright and this is why. This is going to yeah. hurt you and then it's my job to keep you safe. Yeah, um, so if it was a toddler trying to reach for your coffee off the coffee table and you just went, nope, and moved it and that would be it. Yep, Rather, yep. I mean, it's, what, it's what, what have you, you done? Can. Yeah, you're, going I wouldn't, I wouldn't go into it. Would, yeah. There's no discipline needed. There's no time out or anything needed for that sort of behaviour from that age because mm. they're just yeah. curious and that sort yeah. of thing. So you always should try and move as, as, as slowly, quickly as you can without, you know, getting there as fast as you can without putting too much emphasis on it. Yeah. Because 
then they will go back to it and go, oh, that Without was really making them want it, yeah. 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 And you might find some toddlers going up to the oven and going, ooh, hot, 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 because they remember, they're like, remember that time? Remember that time yeah. I nearly touched and you came running over and I got all this attention? So that's why they want to go back and say, hot, no. Mm. And then you, you just say, yeah, you're right. Don't touch. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thank you for that. No worries. So the next mistake is um, is called doing too much for children. And so this is about uh, doing things for kids because it's basically quicker or because they haven't learned the skill yet and you do it better. Um, I see this all the time. I was um, managing a Montessori preschool in Sydney okay. and I, my office was kind of near the doorway and I'd see parents drive up, they'd zoom on up, they'd run around, they'd unbuckle their kids, they'd get them out of the car, they'd grab the bag, they'd walk down, they'd open the gate, they'd hang their child's bag up, they'd take their jacket off, they'd put their lunchbox away, they'd see you later and they're out the door again. They would do everything for their child because they're in a hurry or it's easier. And I just thought, imagine if that child had the time to unbuckle his own seatbelt and open his own door and climb out by himself and can't put his own bag on his back and walk in and open the gate and hang up his bag and learn to unbutton his own jacket mm. and then feel responsible enough to put his own lunchbox up on the shelf. All those little things that children are missing the opportunity to do for themselves. So, yeah. um, we can post the link below, but I've got a big list on my website and it starts from when a child can walk. When they can walk, they can pick up toys and put them away themselves. When they're three, they can open their own curtains. I bet there's many parents mm. listening to this that are still opening their child's curtains. How old is your teenager and you're still opening their curtains? <laughs> because why? Because you've done it their whole life. You don't even remember. Yeah. And so this is a huge mistake. And... I know that this, this, the, the lockdown period has been a great time for parents to step back and go, you know what, I'm not going to do anything for you that you could possibly do for yourself, but I'm going to help you to learn that skill to do it. Um, yeah. And so when children have the ability to get up and make their own bed and open their own curtains and pour their own cereal, you can set them up with a little carafe of milk so that they can even pour their own milk, they can get their own spoon. They can take their own dishes. It gives them a sense of what we've been talking about, personal power mm. contributing to the household. And these are the real good feelings that children need. And we can give it to them in a positive way if we just slow down. Yeah. And it's good because then it builds contributing teenagers and contributing adults. I mean, I've lived in so many flats where they've just, where the guys have just let things pile up in the sink and, expected yeah. me to tidy it all up because I was a girl and it's like no I'm not your mother and they probably don't even see it because no and it's something that their mom that done for them and, and yeah <laughs> yeah 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 absolutely so that's a huge mistake so parents listening to this step back and have a look at what you are actually doing for your child that they could start doing for themselves call a family meeting and say hey guess what kids good news I'm no longer going to be doing everything for you um, I've got a, a, a family who, um, actually it was two families that came together, so they had a lot of teenagers, and the mother was just sick of picking up everything for the, for the children, mm. and so I taught them about this little game, which is called um, Household Cleaner Forever, and what it means is if you find two things belonging to somebody else, and you go put them away, then that person becomes the cleaner forever. Until that person can find two things lying around that belong to someone else, oh. they go put them away, that person becomes the cleaner forever. And it was amazing how quickly that whole house, I'm not talking bedrooms, I'm talking communal areas, lounge, dining, kitchen, dishes, even bathroom, towels on the floor, that sort of thing. She said it was like 24 hours, there was nothing lying around, all she had to do was, you know, the vacuuming and dusting. And to be honest, it was her that the kids were like, Mom, your cup of tea, your slippers. Yeah, I bet they loved forever. that. And um, she actually became the cleaner forever, but she only ever had to, um, you know, pick up her own things. So yeah, that's a good idea for, for kids that are a little bit older. 
Probably a good idea in my house. Yeah, you can try it. Hey, yeah. You don't have to have these strategies work for yeah. spouses too. They do. They do. And we, we have stuff everywhere. Yes. <laughs> Just thinking we've got a bit lazy over is it the yours last, or last is it couple of weeks. Husbands? Oh, it's both. Both, yeah. Both, yeah. We're both not very tidy people. And we both <laughs> notice the other person's stuff, but not our own. We're very good at that. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Well, hey, give it a go. Mm. Pitch it to him, see what he thinks. I will. You'll both know immediately who's going to be the cleaner forever. Oh, You'll both yeah. be kind of like, well, we know who leaves their stuff lying around. So. Of course, my fourth yeah. mistake is called wasted opportunities to learn. And so this is about things that happen in the home, unwanted behaviours that you're seeing, um, any sort of little mini crisis that parents could use as a teachable moment or a learning opportunity, but they haven't got the time or the energy. Mm. So a good example is when the siblings are fighting. So say you've got two brothers and they're fighting over whose turn it is for the game and the parent is, is busy doing something and that they can hear it and it's escalating. And the parent walks in and says, right, that's it. Nobody's having it. And they take it away. Yeah. And the brothers are then resenting each other. It's your fault. Or you yeah. shouldn't have done it, you know. So that hasn't really helped the situation. It may have quietened things down immediately. But there is a wasted opportunity for these two boys to learn. To learn yeah. conflict resolution. And sibling rivalry comes up a lot with the families I'm working with. And... Yeah we have to break it down to the skills that kids need in order to get along. So it's mm. resolving conflicts. It's problem solving. It's seeing other people's perspective. It's empathy and it's emotional regulation. So in that instance, the parent in the long term would be at more of an advantage if they came in and said, Hey, sounds like you guys have a problem. Do you need some help mm. solving it? And then you would hear both sides. And brother number one might say, well, he had a turn and now it's my turn. And yeah. brother number two might say, well, I won that last round, so I get to start again. And so you're not taking sides. You're just going, okay, so you think this, so you think that. And then you're stepping back and you're allowing them to come up with a solution. I wonder what we could do. It takes time and you might get someone storming off and you've got to just, it's more of a coaching role. Yeah. Because so they, they kind of talk over the top of each other, don't they, to start with. He did this, yep. I did it. No, 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 mama. It's like, wait. <laughs> yep, they do. And when they're doing that, you can say, whoa, it's, it sounds like your words are bumping into each other. Should we take turns? Mm -hmm. How about you go first? So you're just kind of, you're coaching them through the process of having the opportunity to speak for themselves, having empathy for how it feels, coming up with rules, solving problems, um, that sort of thing. Mm. So if, you're, um, if your viewers have any questions about specific unwanted behaviours or crises that they are wondering, you know, how to respond in order yeah. to teach, um, they, can, they can throw a question up or post them in the comments or something like that. And, um, we yes, so this will be on show. YouTube. So there's probably a lot them. of, yeah, there's probably a lot of parents going, oh, that's... What about this and what about that? So many different scenarios. Um, mm. That sort of thing. Would people be okay to email you? Yes, absolutely. So I could pop your email address in the show notes as well, yep. which I didn't do last time, but I can do it in this one. Yep, send me an email with questions. If parents are still figuring out their children's natures and they're still not sure, they can send me through some photos and some descriptions and I can help them. Mm. Um, if your parents are wanting some more personalized advice or they want to join one of my programs on my website, I've got a um, free 30 minute discovery session call. They can click on that and um, I can give them a call back. Yeah, that would be very useful actually. Cause just thinking about a, a lot of my friends have two kids and they're always back and forth and there's always, they're always so different in their nature. Mm. as well so what might have worked for the eldest who's bit maybe a bit more sensitive isn't working for the other one who's a bit more strong or yeah. social or whatever and it's like ooh. i mean i know one 
friend in particular, you can just tell by looking at them. The oldest is the social, the youngest is the strong. Yeah. Because yeah. one's like little cherub face and the other's like I'm, I'm on going, a mission. Yeah. I'm going there. I'm going. He always looks like he's focused on something. Yeah. Just from looking at him. And I don't really know the kids <laughs> as his Facebook friends. But yeah. But that leads me to um what we're gonna talk about in the next part. So um do you mind giving a little blurb about sure. so part two yeah time. so we're going to talk about mistakes parents make for each nature so hopefully by then your viewers will know what natures they've got at home mm -hmm. and there are common mistakes that parents make for each nature unintentionally of course they didn't realize um, so we're just going to go through each of the four natures um, and and what might be clashing in their home environment yeah. For the natures. And then part three is going to be about you as a parent and what mistakes you make according to your nature. Um, mm. So you mentioned you thought your dad might have been a strong, so strong natured parents that are very fast, always moving forward. And that can really overwhelm some of the more sensitive natures. Mm. So it's just by nature, we all parent true to our own nature. Um, when I was um, fostering a 10 year old, I was, I'm a social nature, so true to my nature, I've got these ideas and would be driving to school and I'd be like, oh, it's a sunny day and, and I'd just blurt out, oh, we could go to the beach and I just promised all these things because I just I wanted to be optimistic and, you know, um, but for some natures mom. when they hear that, yeah, they're like, hang on a minute, you promised, you know. Um, yeah. So I've got a lot of stories and examples of different natured parents and the things yeah. they do true to their nature. They don't realize yeah. they're doing. My mom, just when you said that, she will go, what are you going to do today? Oh, I don't know. Well, you could do this and this and this and this. And what about this? And have you thought about this? And, and I'm like, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, 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 calm down. I just said, I don't know. Now I've got 10 things I could do. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you probably grew up feeling a little bit overwhelmed most of the time as a sensitive. If you yeah. had a social and a strong, two mm. extroverted parents, you've got your mum that's always busy doing a hundred things, multitasking. You've got the, your dad that's moving forward, getting things into action, finishing projects. And you're probably sitting there going, wow, what about yeah. me? I'm just going to sit in the corner and play Listen. cards. Just play solitaire. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. Lovely. Well, that, brings part one to a close um we normally do a, a summary it, is there anything you want to say to summarize what we what you went through today Good question um i guess again is just having an awareness of children's behavior mm. and and just not seeing it as misbehavior but more as as the child is kind of feeling a little bit stressed and they're actually sending you a message. Perfect. Um, yeah, it's normally my message. Yeah, no, that works. And it's them figuring themselves out as well. It's not just a, an attack. Exactly. And also another good takeaway might be for parents, if they have made some of these mistakes, that it's, it's, it's okay. Um, yeah. And they can use it as an opportunity to role model what an apology looks like. Mm. Uh, you know, they could say things like, hey, you know what? I know that I've been rushing through things and, and, I'm, and I'm really sorry. And I'm gonna try and slow things down a bit for you or, or whatever, whatever the mistake yeah. is that, that you realize you've made unintentionally. It's so mm. powerful to bring the family together and say, hey, you know what? I've realized I've been doing this. And it's, it's, it's putting our family at a disadvantage. So. You know, whatever it is, could even be yelling, might not even be something that we've been yeah. speaking about today. But um, yeah, we're, we all are on this journey and figuring it out and kids grow yeah. up and new challenges rise every day. So there's always, there's mistakes to be made. Perfect. Righty-ho. Well, Jesse, thank you very much for joining me on the Women's Wellness Podcast again. I'm looking forward to part two. So I will sign off now and I'll see you then. See you then. Thanks, Amy. Bye. Cheers.